Hello, I'm Nicole Sorrell, and I'll be discussing the Bobo Project. Global warming is the beginning of the end of humanity. Today, I'll be discussing some background information, my stimulus materials, specific issues, solutions, and my conclusion. What is global warming and what are the effects of it? Global warming is the heating of the Earth's surface due to the burning of fossil fuels, or in this case, drilling for oil. It can cause things such as climate displacement, the melting of glaciers, as well as the extinction or endangerment of certain species, and as well as many health risks. This is why the Wobo Project is incredibly detrimental. What is the Wobo Project? The Wobo Project is an oil drilling project located in the northern slope of Alaska. According to Conoco Phillips, the main leader of this project, it will produce 180,000 barrels of oil per day. This is extremely good for us, for our economy, and it'll also bring down gas prices as well as create 2,200 jobs, which is extremely beneficial. It'll also bring in $8.7 billion in royalties and tax revenues. Um, last year, there were about $200 billion worth made in the oil industry, so this will account to about 4% of it in one project, which is incredibly good. But at what cost? This is where my stimulus materials come into play. In urban evolution, how species adapt to live in cities. It discusses on how species living in urban areas are less adapted to their areas compared to the same species living in non-urban areas. This is due to climate change and global warming, and it can cause extinction or endangerment of certain species. But how does this relate to humans? In the dark side of resilience, it states, but could too much resilience be a bad thing? Just like too much muscle mass could be a bad thing, i.e. putting a strain on the heart. In my case, I believe that global warming and climate change could put a strain on humanity and could possibly lead to either endangerment, extinction, or other deficiencies in other sectors of life. This is how I've come up with the question, what is the best way to minimize the effects of air pollution from the Willow Project on humanity? Now, to understand this, you have to understand hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is a pungent gas released in the oil rigs and when hit with water, it becomes sulfuric acid. And in the case of the Willow Project, it's an offshore drilling project. So that means it will hit water and it will become sulfuric acid. This will cause things such as acidic decomposition and acid rain. Acidic decomposition can corrode metals, buildings, affect the wildlife, water, and other agricultural areas around it. And acid rain can cause things like this the dem demolition of certain natural resources that we need, as well as the effects on agricultural sites that are extremely important for humans. Some of the solutions that have come up with this is higher grade seals, low emitting engines, and maintaining all openings. Higher grade seals will hopefully reduce the amount of emissions let out from these rigs, and low emitting engines will also produce less hydrogen sulfide. And maintaining all openings will just make sure that there's enough maintenance and that there's nothing coming out behind closed doors. But the main two issues with this is one, the money. Low emitting engines are still within works currently and it's extremely expensive to get their hands on it. Higher grade seals will also take up lots of materials and maintaining all openings means employing more people. And while that might not seem like a bad thing, the Willow Project has about eight to $10 billion worth in its budget and it still has to employ, pay, and make sure that they build the rigs in general. So this will cost a lot of money and as well, all of these solutions will not totally dismiss all of the emissions coming out. It will still be there and there will still be some coming out. So it will not fully fix the problem. Another issue that hydrogen sulfide makes is um, health problems to humans. There have been 46 deaths from 2011 to 2017, according to OHSA. And this is because high amounts of hydrogen sulfide can cause things such as death or nausea, headaches, brain damage, and respiratory issues. These two things hit are irreversible. They will stay with you for the rest of our, your life. And it's really important that we protect these workers on this side, especially given how many there will be. So I have two solutions for this issue. One are hydrogen sulfide detectors. These are portable detectors in which people can track the amount of hydrogen sulfide within the area and see is it poisonous, is, it, is there a right amount, and it'll hopefully help 
these workers and protecting themselves. Another solution is adequate education. Adequate education will help these workers identify what is the smell, what to do if there is a hydrogen sulfide poisoning. So it's extremely important that we implement these to protect these workers as there are so many in there. But to best efficiently hit this problem, it's important that we use a synthesized solution. So in my synthesized solution, I've used more maintenance, adequate education, and hydrogen sulfide detection. The reason I took out low emitting engines is because they are too expensive for the budget and it might hit the, hurt the economic impact of the Willow Project because as stated before, they're bringing in about $8.7 billion from one thing alone and it's 180 barrels, 180,000 barrels of oil per day. That's an extreme economic boost and using low emitting engines might hurt that. More maintenance and adequate edu uh, education and hydrogen sulfide detectors are the best way to not only keep the workers safe, but also protect the areas around it. Now, some ending notes that I just wanted to make aware to my audience is the fact that Conoco Fields is not completely oblivious to what is going on with the Willow Project. Um, they know about the air emissions and they are trying their best to curb that. They are following the Paris Treaty Agreement as much as they possibly can, as well as trying to have a zero net air emissions by 2050, which is incredibly good and it's a great reassurance factor, but it could be too late. Many critics and many scientists state that we only have 10 years to make a very distinct impact, otherwise some of these things will be irreversible. And it's extremely important that we urge them to be more diligent and to use more efficient solutions. Here is my work cited page. Thank you. Um, Nicole, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? Well, as I started, I really wanted to talk about the Willow Project and how it affects the environment, more like the wildlife and the special diverse environment that Alaska has. But as I started to do more research and I started to learn more about hydrogen sulfide and its effects on the workers and the areas around it, I started to gear it more towards air emissions and how it affects the people and their living areas. And what additional questions emerged from your research and why are these questions important? Um, so I talked about low emitting engines in one of my solutions. Um, Currently, there's not enough information on low emitting engines, which raises the question of how is that development going and how, and because it's the possibility of the future for oil drilling. So it's extremely important that we try and further our research within the low emitting engines department. So that question is extremely important to my issue. All right, thank you.